Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is the Ramble and we go until midnight tonight from New York, New York. The city's so nice. Yeah, they named it twice. Ladies and gentlemen, there she is once again, the lovely, the attractive, the uh, ind- uh, indomitable the uh, uh, President of the United States? No, no it's uh, Lori Thompson. What Hello. And yeah. two out of five is good, you know, so I'll, I'll go with two of those. And uh, I let me be the first to compliment you on your U.S. Open shirt. You're looking pretty snazzy. Oh, oh yeah, Oops. well, that, that, that's from a couple of years ago. Marjorie used to get a lot of these when she went over to the U.S. Open, but she didn't go this year. No. Really? I to see Coco. Take it. I love Coco Golf. I know. We were cheering <laughs> for a couple of years ago. Marjorie has a t-shirt from like five years ago, four years ago. This says Team Coco on it. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Because, mm-hmm. you know, they when you have a bunch of t-shirts and they're like either, you know, you too rag to wear or whatever, there is a company that makes quilts out of your old t-shirts. You can probably find them on Etsy. I know really? they used to advertise yeah, in the back of Rolling Stone magazine. Oh, okay. But anyway, so she um, she's been a, a you know a fan of Coco's for years, and been wait, and been waiting for her to you know come to the front to really win she, win, win big, and she did. She's finally. just proud, isn't she? She's like nineteen. Nineteen. And mm-hmm. I was so happy for her. I mean, and, and I'm not a big, you know, follower of tennis. You know, I mean, I know who the players are because Marjorie teaches me. Uh, <laughs> and I, it wasn't until just last week that I figured out how the whole thing was scored. Oh, you know? that damn scoring is crazy. I just like it because it's back and forth. It's comforting. Well, there are five games per set. Okay. This is, see, I need this tutorial. And you have to win three out of the five. Okay, that's fair. Oh, no, wait you a know. minute. No, for women, it's two out of three. No, three sets, three games. So okay. You have to win two out of the three. Now, if they can just start giving us the same money, that'll be great. Then we'll be willing to well, play. They gave, they gave the, the women are getting the same money as the guys now. I'm glad. At the Open? Yeah, because I know that... Billie Jean King years ago lobbied for fit. that. And, yeah. And, uh, you know... But they only play three sets, so they should only get two two fifths of uh, three fifths of what the women of the get. dough. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, we'll go three out of five if you want. Just give yeah. us the dough. Show us the money. <laughs> yeah, show yeah. us the money. So it, it uh, you know, I was very happy for her. her you know, it, it's a great moment in her life. Yes, and she just breathes optimism. I mean, she there's something about her that just. Is optimistic. She's, she's a very pleasant person. Her politics are in the right place, you know. <laughs> she's just really good. She's an example uh, to yeah. other young players. And uh, she is, I don't know if she's the youngest ever to win. Uh, she's she's in a rarefied class. She's I think. close, yeah. though. And she can go the rest of her life and win every major, you know, tennis competition going. And this one will still probably be the most wonderful for her, the most memorable oh, yeah. for her. You, because, you, you know, never get it first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she beat a Russian, so in the Cold War. <laughs> I know. It's like Coco Goff beat some unpronounceable name. Yeah. Well, they don't. You, do, wanna... you know, they don't. They don't list Russia anymore. If a person's a Russian player, they don't list any country, and there's a black flag up there. Really? Yes, on the scoring. I thought you were kidding. No, no. Whoa! A lot of sports uh, have uh, decided that they're not going to recognize Russia. Wow. Yeah. Well, I thought maybe they were waiting to see out of this Ukrainian skirmish who would win, so they were just leaving a black flag, and then they could, like, iron something on. Yeah. But not that. No, it's just, just a black square there. 
Yeah. Oh. So, but it's funny, you know, we're not going to let Russia be be shown, right? So it doesn't say Russia, and there's a black flag, and you then know, oh, well, that must be Russia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind, exactly. of, it's kind of silly if you think about it. It's very silly. Yeah. yeah. And what about, um, you know, we got, and man, it's all China, 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 you know. And uh, it's just interesting to see over the, there are pivotal times in American history, you know, usually over the space of about like a decade to 20 years mm -hmm. when a lot of things change. And I think if you, especially if you read the headlines, you know, do you remember on our show when uh, we had Carl Sagan on? Yes. And you, asked, yes, you asked him to make a prediction, um, and he said by the year twenty twenty five, China will be the dominant power. And so, did, uh, he, did he say that? I don't remember it, but if he, he if, did say that, yeah, because it just like struck me like a you know skillet in the head. Well, in, like, those, well in those days, it it didn't seem possible because they were still such a communist country. They were not a capitalistic country. They didn't have a lot of business and whatever. So you kind of went, what? You know, China? Yeah. They're not set to well, do this, that. Exactly. And this was in the 90s, you know, when he made this uh, prediction, calculation, call it what you want. And I just thought that was profound. Well, just I, like, you know, we went to China. Yeah. Uh, and we love China. I mean, it's just w wonderful. The people are wonderful. The country is wonderful. It's the politics that are fucked. Yeah. You know? And how does, how does that filter in to the day-to-day? -day? Because you think that that would make for a repressed people. And it doesn't, okay. like I, you we, say, we, personally. The, the, her, Marjorie's company supplied us with a driver for the two weeks that Ooh. we were there. Yay. And she actually worked for the company, or she was brought in, it, it, whatever. She was with us for two weeks, for most of the two weeks. We went over to Gulen for about four days or something, but for the most part, she was our driver. And at one point, I said, uh, um, are, you, uh, uh, are you a communist? And she said, uh, well, that's a member of the party, and I'm not a member of the party. Okay. I've never joined. And I said, how do you feel about the fact that you can't vote? And she said, well, you know, if I wanted to, I could become a communist and I could vote. But, you know, I don't care. Just as long yeah. as they don't bother me and as long as I'm making a good living and as long as you know my life is taken care of, uh, they can go play their little games and play communists and do, do their, you know, basically that's what she was saying. We, I don't care what they do, it was her attitude. Um, and I think maybe that's the way most uh, Chinese people feel. Uh, those are those guys sitting in that big building, you know, off of Red Square and uh, Tiananmen Square, rather. And... Uh, uh, you know they they just they, they make up all kinds of rules and stuff like that but it doesn't doesn't as long as it doesn't affect me they can play we'll let them play their game yeah it's like um you know the way we feel about the white house yeah. no what are they doing they're playing hide and seek today you know yeah. china is such a big country i mean yeah you, you know we think the united states is a big country china is a massively big country and, 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 and they've got a, what a billion and a half people I think something I don't like that. know it's, the stat. it's incre yeah. incredible well wait a minute hold on a second Echo how many people are there in China in 2023 the population of China is 1.43 billion people 1.43 billion that's so a I lot was close. <laughs> I was close and yet does it seem do the cities seem like hyper crowded uh, well, here's what I, you go to Beijing. We were in Beijing, mm -hmm. uh, and Beijing is you have never seen massive buildings, corporate buildings like these. I mean, they're just huge. They just built huge, you know, and they're such a short people, oddly enough. But they build these huge, huge buildings, uh, and, and those I, high ceilings. What a waste of air. Yeah, well, I mean, I was just gasping as I looked at these buildings. And we were driving down the main highway in, in Beijing, and I'm going, wow. 
You know, it's amazing. They've got a telecom building for their network, their television network, CC <laughs> TV. <laughs> and it is the most amazing building I've ever seen. It's like this Escher painting. You know, it's like... Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, the stuff... They, the, and now all that that's been done in Beijing, all those highways and so on, were built in the last 20 years. Prior to that, they were just dirt roads that bicycles drove down. That's how fast that country has turned itself around. Well, because they they were riding technology, you know, and that, but when, when uh, Sagan well, made that it, prediction, yeah. the, the technology was still embryonic, you know, the, like in the whole... Well, it isn't so much the technology. Yeah. It, they are not very very good at technology itself, but they are good at having companies that will put together the technology for you. In other words, if Apple uh, has a new iPhone, they give them the specs and everything, and they make the iPhone in China. It's not like they invented the iPhone. Right. Okay. The new iPhone, too, has like this big, people are all a flutter about the change in the, the charging port. They because always the, go crazy over the charging port. You know, this is right. the third change for a charging port. Yeah. And, and it's it, the same char charging point, port, port, <laughs> I can't talk anymore. <laughs> uh, You're doing fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, the charging port uh, that we have in uh, the uh, iPad has had this charging port for, you know, two years now. It's just yeah. simply, you have that, that port you, in a lot of your stuff. It's just yeah. what they call the USB-C. <laughs> But Apple mm -hmm. always felt we have to have something unusual and different. So they first they came sure. out with uh, they came out with uh, this. This the was mo no. this was the most <laughs> recent one. That was number two. The one before uh -huh. it was this big clunky thing you put in there. Uh, yeah, one of those. I wish I had, I, had I wish I had an example of that. Now wait a minute. Let me see if I can find a USB. Uh, yeah, because I have a Mac Air and then I have an iPad. And then I, think, I have a. I think this is my button. USB. Yeah, this is a USB. And they all take this, this, all uh, different chargers. I, well, I can't get it up here. Yeah, know your charger. Well, there is. They said that this moves us one step closer. The New York Times said they moves us one step closer to like a universal charging port, something yes. that's good for everything. But okay. I don't know if that's the case. Uh, there I it is. To. There's your USB C. I managed to get oh. it on the screen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and, I mean, and, uh, it, it, so it's different from uh, this, right? Yeah. Right. And this is a USB C here. Okay. See, everybody getting a lesson. But so I, what? So what if yes. there's a new ch p charging port? They yeah. Did, now they, you, were, you know what they did is they actually went from something that wasn't a priority of uh, of Apple's. In other words, mm -hmm. that usually they had connectors that they invented, and they would only work in iPhones and so. Now they've given up and just said, "Well, I will go to the, with the USB-C, which is used on everything." Yeah. So yeah. relax, public. Now, are you one of those folks that goes out and buys the latest iPhone? I'm just as long as I have something within two, you know, two previous. Well, here, <laughs> yeah. here, here's what I uh, I have uh, the iPhone 13. That's right. Remember, right? I skipped the fourteen, and then I figured I would go to fifteen. But there's not enough, not enough new stuff on the new phone that would make me want to buy one. Yeah. See, that's the way to me it was when we went in, and we could get a thirteen or a fourteen for like the same deal. And I yeah. said, "Well, what does the fourteen have?" And I was unimpressed. So I said, "We'll just go with the 13. I think it was a little. What cheaper. I care about is the video quality. Right. And for and you. what changes they make to that and they really haven't made much of a change to it. Yeah. So you really. know, so I mean, I don't know why I probably need one of those. Uh, but I, I am like, I am gonna change my watch. I am they have yeah. a bigger one that's a sports watch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, in case uh, uh, it helps you if you're climbing, it uh, has satellite connection, all of that. But it's bigger, and because my as I get older, my eyesight is not what it was. Yeah, immaculate. I, I would like a big one so everything is bigger on here. Yeah, yeah that would work. Yeah, yeah. but the uh, the thing that I don't worry about much about like because I was thinking about the aging process since I was twelve, 
You know, I mean, it's well, like, what do you want? No time to worry about it now. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So I yeah. thought, what don't I want? It was like, first of all, try to age as gracefully as you can. And then also go with what works and don't not, don't be peer pressured. I think if, you know, in your 20s and your 30s, you're peer pressured into having the latest gizmo. You're all out for cocktails at a fabulous, trendy place. And, you know, the person with the 13 is a pariah. Ooh, he touched well, I, that. I have, he over touched here that my, I have over here my original iPhone, which Marjorie yeah. and I waited like three hours in line to get. Really? Oh, yeah. That, in New were, York? Those were the days whenever a new iPhone came out. That day, there was a line around the block in front of every, you know, Apple store. It was worse than buying a Beanie Baby, you know, at Christmas time. Yeah, right. And when I go back and I look at that old phone, it's only this big. I mean, it's, you know. Because there were some advantages to, like, my cousin, who's, like, not a technical guy, he prefers his little, I don't know what it is, phone, because it fits in his pocket, and he was a park ranger for so long, a a forest ranger. And so he needed something that would fit in his Levi pocket and wouldn't slip out. So you know, yeah, so well, much of these, the I, I don't know which uh, which uh, uh, phone you have, but we have the we have the Pro. Uh, okay. The Pro, and then there's the Pro Max, which is bigger. And I've thought about the bigger one, but you know, I mean, I know this one fits in my pocket just fine. Right. If unless it conveniently fits in pocket or purse, I don't have much, much uh, enthusiasm for gizmos. Yeah. But my iPad does fit in my purse. Your what? My what? iPad does. The well, yeah, on your purse, in your purse. Yeah. Okay. Not in yeah. Not in my pocket. pocket. <laughs> I'm not wearing kimonos j- just yet. Wow. <laughs> but you are getting. You know what New York City's getting? New trash cans. They're very sleek. They look like sharper image or something. And of course, you know, because is their want, um, the NYT goes into detail about the history of New York trash cans. And apparently in the 60s, I don't know whose Beautify New York campaign this was, but uh, they painted bright, lively colors on the trash cans. And yet they were so attractive at that point that 5,000 a year were stolen. (laughs) So they went with something (laughs) a little more uh, just streamlined, I guess. Really? Wow. Less art. Wow. Yeah. That, <laughs> but they do remember when uh, there was a big brouhaha in San Francisco when they, the Luclo or Ludo French toilets. Oh, I remember the, those toilets. Well, we sent Farnham into one of those. Exactly. And he kind of narrated what it, and it well, was. Well, like what happened is they were, what we were testing, they're self cleaning. In other right. words, you use the toilet and you leave. And then there's this whole sound of stuff splashing inside and everything, and it literally cleanses the whole toilet for the next person. Yes. Yeah, and it's, it's locked during that cleaning process. So what he did. So a person. Yeah. He, yeah. he didn't leave. <laughs> Remember, he sat there. We had him on the phone. He, he did doing, all the machinations to make it to he, get it into clean mode well, and he, just stay there. He he. he, he opened the door and closed it like he had left yeah and immediately the door locked and everything started spraying on him and chuck showered that day we all noted that i, I think so <laughs> uh, that was he good. was game that boy yeah and that's why being game is one of the most important qualities i think a person can have you know being open to spontaneity open to wacky i hate that word but ideas because uh that's what I liked about um, well, I my think husband. he liked to see how much he could discuss people. Well, there was that. We met him when he was making jewelry out of bones. Out of bones. bones. Bone jewelry was the first thing. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what a femur <laughs> earring would look femur like. Femur earrings, yeah. <laughs> he hit me on the hip, though. You know? Were they human bones? I think so. They were human bones. Where they you, were. Where do you get human bones from? He probably was digging up graves or something. Well, he was uh, he was in uh, cahoots with the Gold Coast killer who they just who they got because uh, Pat Oswalt's wife was uh, one of the people that was instrumental in cracking that case. Right. You know, that the serial killer that fled California with his uh, yeah. his impulse. 
Yeah, she yeah. covered it, and she uh, I think she was responsible for his arrest. I think so, and that was, and she died right around that time. Yeah, uh, yeah. young, so yeah. that was kind of interesting. And they they sensed early on that he was in law enforcement, uh, which he was for a time. Mm-hmm. And uh, they also he had that unusual habit of tying up the husband and putting saucers on cups and saucers on him, so that if he moved, the attacker would know. Well, that was while he was raping the wife. Saucers. Cups and saucers, because you know if you they're, yeah, they're balanced. Yeah. It. yeah, but I thought that was that was just weird. He must have read that or figured it out in some sick way. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, yeah, uh, that was that was a twenty year. I, oh, w- or more. I, I wonder if when this guy came into a house, started raping the wife, had the husband tied up, the husband went, "Go ahead, we like cuckolding." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the word for that? That, we got, <laughs> husbands that like to sit there and watch their wives have sex with somebody else, yeah. Oh my gosh, I I didn't know I there knew, was a I word knew for a it. couple like that, and uh, they would invite me over, and I would have sex with the wife as the husband sat by the by the edge of the bed. Didn't touch me ever. There was nothing homosexual no. about about the act. He just liked to see his wife getting screwed. Well, well, I know they probably didn't pay you, but they gave, gave you a piece of pie or something, right? That is your parting gift. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for coming on. Well, they're really nice. <laughs> I mean, they, uh, they, uh, we did it at my place, so I felt safe, you know. Yeah, that's crucial because, man, I've heard of some it, kinky initially stuff. Initially, I was very wary about the situation, and then they were so nice. They were really a nice couple, and he really loved his wife, and he wanted her to have a good time, and he liked to watch it. Well, we'll see nothing wrong with that. Consenting people, I don't. I, I mean, found I, it. I found it very um, invigorating. Yeah. yeah. We, it's um, what I've learned is I don't. Not what I've learned is not to judge. You know, I'm not here to judge anybody. I just stick to my own criteria for the life I want to lead, and just go. That's that's great. Well, it was you know? two of the things I love the most: having sex and mm-hmm. putting on a show. Oh, whoa, 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 and speaking of which, I wanted to ask you if you knew an adult film uh, producer, director named uh, Terramino, Tristan Terramino. I've Big heard Lord. the name, but I've never, I never knew him. Well, the daughter of that, um, you know, that person um, is has written a memoir about being the child of an adult film director yeah and i think that'd be a that's on my wish list and along with uh kara swisher's book which is called burn book and like slam books and burn books those are familiar to junior high girls and they were this is where they'd have a book and they would slam people in them right yeah that's like for mean girls yeah yeah. it was i never participated in those because i thought they were just so Defeating well, it's and very, lame. very mean, isn't it? Oh, it's totally mean. The idea is to be mean. It's like the snarkiness that's now allowed in culture so much. But it probably it, it stemmed from slam books or burn books. But hers is like a Hollywood Babylon on Silicon Valley, and I like her writing anyway. So that's a good one to get. Yeah. For Chris, if giving. Now, is your father <laughs> still alive? Uh, the T- Terraminos. Yeah. I don't know. Kara Swisher's is called Burn Book. I can look at, I'll find out yeah. what uh, Terrafino's uh, book is called. And so, the uh, yeah, I thought that is a unique perspective. Because, you know, when you're growing up, it's all normal. It's all you've ever known. So, that's when they ask p- children of celebrities, what's it like being well, the daughter? Well, you know, I think, you know, for instance, uh, uh, this is a very interesting one. What's the name of the actress? Now I'm trying to remember. I got to look it up here. Uh, uh, the what child. Was, what was her name? Hold on a second. Give uh, me a little more. I can probably tell you. Uh, she was in American Beauty. Uh, there was. Uh, oh, Annette Bening. No, 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 no. Not Annette Bening. She played. The, oh, you mean the one that played the cheerleader, or the one that played the daughter? I, she played one that played the daughter. She's good. I mean, I always thought she'd have a fruitful career, but I haven't seen a lot of her well, since then. Let me just go to IMDb here. IMDb. It's a, 
IMDb is the best vehicle for for winning oh, bets. Oh, it's, it uh, it put uh, Leonard Maltin out of business. Because uh, <laughs> you remember he used oh, to have all those books and everything. Oh, oh I know let, what let you see. what you need to see. Twenty okay. essential books you uh, movies American you need to see. American Beauty. Beauty. I have the screenplay to that. Um, I don't know where I got it. I think there I got go. it in the arts. American Beauty, and, and it's and it was what's her name? What's her name? What's her name? What's her name? The daughter, yeah, the daughter Benning, Casey, uh, and uh, yeah, it was. Those were the two is, team leaders on it that is movie. Here, hold on a second. Isn't that Benning? Thora Birch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Thora she Birch. is. She has a name. I mean, that's yeah. a familiar name. Do you, and then you know, you know who her probably, mother was? No. Carol Connors. Do you know who Carol Connors was? I don't. She played the nurse in Deep Throat. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, didn't know that. Yeah. But there well they the term now, Nepo boy or Nepo girl. And her I mean, father, I believe, was also a porn actor. Really? Yes. That he could write a good memoir. And she, I love it, she turned out terrific. You know, she I, did. She because I don't know. I don't know if the um, if the parents bring you know bring their business home to the kids. It would know. depend on. It would be a situation by situation experience. I you think. Know, I just That's looked, what, Yeah, yeah. I just looked yeah. at the clock and we've run over. We have. The we nerve st of we us. start talking and this is this is what happens. We're like one of those cups piled on. The husband, we've run it over. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see her next week. Her name is there. It's right under you. It's Lori Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Lori. Thank I you, appreciate baby. Appreciate it. Bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's see here. Uh, I've got to do this. I'm going to do that so that it looks better. Uh, I'm not as, uh, I don't have my lights tonight. Again, uh, just before I go on, my machine suddenly goes and says, oh, well, we're not gonna let you have any, any pictures in here at all. You know, we're not gonna let you have any light. So if I, and I it's just uh, the lights are off now and they may go on at any point. It has something to, see my lights are, can, are part of the Wi-Fi. And it, it's a bad thing because if it were just hooked into the wall and I could flip a switch, but no, it's reliant on the Wi-Fi. I'm going to have to write those people at Elgato and tell them that this is just getting to be a pain in the ass. But all of a sudden, it, uh, it won't work. Okay, so excuse me if I don't look my usual radiant self with the lights working here. And at any point during the show, uh, the lights may suddenly decide to start working. So, what the hell? I, I, I give up. All right? But anyway, there's some people waiting to come on the show, so let me admit them at this point. And uh, there is a Brian Zygman, and uh, he hasn't been around for a while. And there's uh, Brian Neary. Uh, this is the Brian I-A-N as opposed to Y-A-N. And, of course, Charlie Wallace. Hello there, Charlie. How are you all? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. 50% Brian's on the show. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> what? And you look terrible tonight. What? <laughs> What'd you say, Brian? I can't hear you. Your audio suddenly went off. You, you, you look terrible tonight. Yeah, I, that's right. Because my lights you don't look your radiant self, your usual radiant self. Well, you know this works anyway. I mean, it does work. Yes. You know, it's just that I don't have any lights here to make me look uh, pretty, and so on and so forth. But anyway, it's uh, it's Thursday. Uh, again, we have nobody calling, but that's if you know, we'll just we'll live with the quality people only calling. Okay. Uh, there's uh, we're, we're like the starters in baseball, you know. We're the starters, and then you got these guys, you know, relief pitching, but not relief jokes. That's for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. So anyway, uh, uh, I I just love have talking to Lori. It just mm -hmm. 
It oh, was, she's wonderful. God, I love her. Well, you know something? We worked together for, hmm, God, how many years? Maybe 11 years, something like that, 12 years. And um, when I called her, I said, let's do one of these things. And we started doing it. It was like where we left off, yeah. you know? And that was wonderful. It was just wonderful. And uh, so we're considering doing a... Um, uh, doing a show uh, with Alex and Lori and then bringing on people like Chuck Farnham and Bubs and all the people that used to do the show in San Francisco and maybe even try and contact some comics we haven't talked to in a long time and maybe doing that for a show say on a Friday night but not live be pre-recorded yeah. um, and then that will leave us one day to do a show with the callers, and that would probably be like Wednesday or something like that. So you know, we're, we're, these are things we're considering, but we haven't we haven't written them in stone because I just mailed out to uh, Bubs uh, his uh, a camera for him. Now that he has high speed internet, so he should be receiving it about now as we speak. So uh, it, it was fun to send stuff out to him. Yeah. You know, hopefully, I mean, he has a he has a laptop that J Dana Carvey gave him to use, bought him, so he could maybe call Dana Carvey, and then Carvey started doing this thing with David Spade and hasn't gone back to doing his own podcast. So there's this computer sitting in his home, that's a it's like a it's a Apple laptop, and it looks like it's got to be in pretty good shape. And he's had it for a couple of years and hasn't used it. <laughs> you know. See, when I was a kid, Pluto was a planet. Yep. I, I still consider it a planet. I mean, it was a planet when I was a kid. Yep. You know? I consider it a planet too, but they don't listen to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, well, who who started that whole move to get rid of him as planet? Was that what's his name over at the uh, New York? Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Neil deGrasse. I don't think he started it, but he was a, an advocate for it. I think I brought really? that up. Huh? Really? He was an advocate for it not being a planet. That's right. Yeah, because it's so small. Well, you huh. know, I let's let's go for the let's stand up for the little guy. You know, yeah, you know, exactly. I mean, there was something everybody loved about Pluto. Number one, simply because Disney named a dog after it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, as a kid, don't you remember growing up and loving? If you had to say, what's your favorite planet? You would say Pluto. No, yeah. you'd say Uranus. And then you <laughs> go for an hour. No, you, 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 would say, you would say Uranus. <laughs> Adrian, she knows all the planets, so she's named them all. And when she came to that, I had to giggle. Yeah. And she didn't know why you were giggling? She had no idea. Oh, okay. Okay, well, she'll find out. Yeah. It, was the, it was the communists that got rid of Pluto. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Mine was always Uranus, yeah. personally. Uranus was your favorite? I was well, like, like, I, I mean, if you're like, a, if you're like a class clown kind of guy like I was, it's like, yeah, it's got to be Uranus. I mean, well, you know what's strange about fair. Pluto, though, is they decommissioned it, so to speak, as a planet. So we only have nine, eight, eight, planets, eight planets as opposed to nine planets. But turns out that Pluto may be the only planet with any kind of life on it. So, you know, come on. The other, the other may be, I think Saturn may have one of its moons they feel may have some yeah. kind of life on. You know, that if we find life on other planets, it will probably be on their moons. I mean, Jupiter, yeah. you couldn't even land on Jupiter. You'd just be smashed flat, you know. And it's, I think it's a big, ugly planet myself. I don't like Jupiter at all. If they were to decommission a planet, Jupiter would be a good idea, okay? Just hogging up the a lot of space, you know. It's this big, giant planet. With a big but whenever, what? Whenever you see those drawings or something, Saturn with the rings is always the amazing yeah. because you see, you know, I think that's that's the most amazing planet. That's only yeah, that was always my favorite planet because of the rings. 
That's right. basically, it's basically, well, not sand, but it's rocks. They mm -hmm. were once a planet, a moon or something, and they blew up. Am I right about this? Uh, what? What? what the the Saturn's, ra Saturn's rings. Oh, well, it, was, it was a moon that broke up. The yeah. moon that broke hey, Alex. up. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. yeah. How'd you get the name Moon Rocks again? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that. Alex knows a lot about science and space. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember Albert. He used to joke around about well, how you, you see, were. Well, you see, when right. I was a kid. Okay. When I was a kid, I uh, was into this sort of stuff. Okay, I uh, space stuff. In fact, I used to at school tell everybody that within ten years we're going to be on the moon, and they all laughed at me. And within ten years, we were on the moon. Yeah. So anyway, uh, because I was saying these kind of things at school, which you should never do, I, they started calling me Moon Rocks. Mm -hmm. And that was my nickname at school. Hey, Moon Rocks, hey, hey, Moon Rocks, yeah. Uh, you know, so I, that, was my, that was my little nickname at school. And I've always joked about it, but it, it hurt. Yeah. Well, well I, I remember I, I read a jungle one time that was about, you know, moon rocks straight from the moon. And and uh, you guys did play it quite a bit. Yeah. Back yeah. on Sirius. Yep. Uh, <laughs> did, did it dig at you every time you, you heard no, it? No, 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 no. <laughs> I, get, I, got, I got a great kick out of it. Well, it was funny because I there was, we had it. There's there's a guy. He now does beer labels for. Oh, look uh, what I can do now! Here we go. Ta da! Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Anyway, it, all of a sudden it comes back. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so you you did the moon rocks thing. Well, yeah, and then I I, I had an artist of mine, Jim McHugh. Oh, yeah. And he did, he made a cartoon of you, and we sent it in one time. It was uh. And it was you in front of a microphone with a moon rock sitting on the desk. Wait a minute. Well, hold on. You for people, years, I had a copy of it. You keep people, And I know you had it, but I don't know what you did with it. Other. Keep talking to each other. I'll be right back. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. And the lights I, start I had working and I'm leaving. Okay. Down in the basement. Uh, anyway. Uh, What's he doing? I'll be right back. He's going to get it. I think he's, he's going to get something. I don't know. going to get something. So oh, when you listen to him, Brian, is that when you listen to him on Sirius? Yeah, yeah. I used to listen to him on Sirius. And I used to, uh, at the time, we had a good working band. We, we sent jingles in all the time. Mm. And I got I got, I got, got to give them props. They played them all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was pretty cool. But uh, uh, who's Lori Thompson? Is she like an actress or something? She, no, no. I, she oh. went... She was on Live One of Five. She was like his, you know, I don't know what you call, it, you know, the Robin to his, you know, less sort of like Robin with uh, with what's his name, Howard Stern. Uh, uh, yeah. Let me see yeah, here. Newswoman. Uh, yeah, what have you? What have you guys been? Let me put my earphones on. What have you guys been saying about me while uh, I was uh, Alex, we're, we're, Alex, we're busy talking about something. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. You watch the playback. You'll hear. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> am I going no, to enjoy, am I nothing. going to enjoy it or be pissed? No. no she was a news, she was a newswoman. She was a newswoman, but then she got to be you know. Oh, here we go. The unrailing. What's this? It's a frame. It's been in this beautiful frame for years. Yep. Is this what you're talking about? Oh my God. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah. No, it was so great. I kept it. Yeah. Oh man, that 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 makes me feel good. With my 3D glasses down here, and I didn't ever realize that's a moon rock right there, right? That's oh, a moon wow. rock. Yeah. 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 So there's your uh, picture. After all these years, you didn't ever think uh, it would turn up, did you? You said no, you didn't know where yeah. it was anymore. Well, look at you. Yeah. It didn't end up in the and it didn't end up in a dam, uh, in a dumpster. That's pretty good. No, where it, where do you keep that, Alex? I keep that in the guest room. I have it uh, up against the wall. Yeah. I, hey, Alex. Yeah. I still rem I still remember on the show when uh, when you guys brought it out and you were talking about it, 
And uh, Albert goes, um, by the way, I, I did not draw that. I was the musician. I just had one oh. of our artists. I had Jim McHugh do it. He was an artist, and he's he's a cartoonist. Yeah. And he, he whipped that thing up like nothing and gave it to me, and I was like, oh, my God. But I remember Albert, he goes, look at the eyes. Yeah. They're, they're so sullen. He said sullen. And I, I don't know what that means, but I thought it was I, – I just well, remember that. those are kind that. of my eyes. Where did you get the picture to do it from? I don't know. But fucking internet i don't i don't know yeah because that's I, maybe, you know, I gave, it, it, maybe i probably gave him a few pictures of you from yeah. wherever and then he just did it yeah well that's <laughs> me without a beard yeah yeah and a mustache but outside of that it's it looks like i look without the beard and mustache and with you know my funny? sullen my sullen eyes the sullen eyes what does sullen mean i don't know but anyway, well, that's your picture. There he is, no, folks. Well, that's pretty good. And Jimmy Q would be very proud that you still have that. And you know what's funny? I must have bought two picture frames of the same type because that's the exact same frame I had that it was in. So I must have bought two you frames know something? and put it in. It might have been that you sent it to me with the frame. Huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I don't think Marjorie framed this at all. Hmm. You know. Hmm. Uh, so I've had that. God, ever since ever since I you sent it to me, so congratulations. Uh, See, I take care of things. I know. Well, it was great because, listen, imagine being like a band and that, and when you're like eighteen, nineteen years old, you think you're going to be some big rock star. And but I was listening to you every day, and I had this bright idea. I'm going, oh, I'm going to start sending in jingles. Yeah. And and I would send them in, and, and then you guys would play them. Going in and out of commercial breaks and stuff. Did you do the one that was the Great American Broadcast? Yes, yeah. we did a bunch of them. Yeah, well, we, I still have that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, it, it, that guy's a fucking genius, Keith Fee. He, he drives like a, uh, a train on. Uh, he drives a local uh, Conrail train around here. Yeah. And he go, this guy can pick up any instrument. And I played him the Great American Broadcast, which was what some 1940 song. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And he picks up a guitar and he just like tilts his head like a dog listening to you. Mm -hmm. And he, and then he just figured it out and played it. And then I brought the rest of the band in to add the rest of the stuff. And the guy was a genius. He could transpose anything. He took that entire vocal orchestra song and just like banged it out on a guitar. I, you know, with chords, I, I've never seen anybody so talented in my life. Yeah. And, and but, but it, anyway, the point I was making was, we would send in these, these jingles, and you guys would play them, and we got the biggest kick out of it. We felt like we cracked the magical code. Oh, just send these uh, this radio guy, you know, some tunes, and the guys they'll they'll play it. And uh, it was it was a good time for us in our twenties when we thought we were going to be rock stars one day. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, it, so. it was really good, and I still have. I know where I have it, but I can't play it now because it isn't loaded in. But one of our oh, we did when we went to originally did a show out of the TV at, at legi legitimate TV studio. We had these openings that we made, and one of them was that version of the theme song, the Great American Broadcast theme. And uh, I have it. I'll load it in so that maybe we can play it one night here. You know. So we have it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yes, th but thank you. Those were very nice and they were very appreciated when they were done. And you used a name for the group, didn't you? Yeah, we were called the Feel Goods. The Feel Goods. Right. It's terrific. Just terrific. Yeah. No, it's, it's good. I, I was very young when I started listening to you, but uh, uh, I, I I just enjoyed it very much, and I, I followed you around ever since. And I, I, I got to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Back when you and Albert first kicked off after Sirius XM, mm -hmm. you were doing these, you were doing the thing where it was like a podcast, but you would have the you would have the images of things pop up on the side and you would make, you know, commentary. And I thought it was brilliant. And would you know, it was like the, you mean the, TV, the TV thing we did as soon as we left Sirius XM. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, I can't remember what was on live stream. Well, we had we yeah, but we we yeah live stream. Uh, okay. We had uh, we had a, that was a that was a great studio. Was, we used a thing called a Trinity, uh, not a Trinity. What do they call it? Uh, it was like our Trinity. Uh, uh, they called it. I can't remember what it's called now. But anyway, we used this piece of equipment that allowed us to do all that. To have uh, that was a, a virtual set. There was no such thing. I was sitting at a table, and it just looked like this big set with screens in back of us and so yeah. on. And we could feed stuff to the screens, and it really looked. It looked terrific. You know. That was cool. That was so professional looking, and you. I love that. It was yeah. like you had a regular newscast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And and but but it was funny because there wasn't a lot of people at the time that was doing that sort of commentary with the right. with the image on the side. And then you look today and that's what all late night is. Well, I'll tell you if anybody wants to see those, they're on our Roku channels. Oh, wow. Uh yeah, if you go to our Roku channels, uh I can't remember uh I'd have to look at the Roku channel now to tell you how to navigate there, but there's the it's I think it was called Gabnet TV is the same section, and we have those old shows, those old, uh, and I think one of your themes is on there. So if you have yeah, Roku, if you have a Roku, congratulations. If you don't, yeah, fuck but, off. But, you but Alex, you I, honest to God, I think you were one of the first people to do that thing where you pull stuff up on the side and make commentary on it. I do talk soup was doing stuff like that, but. As for, you were doing it before late night was all doing it. I'll tell you. I don't know. I'll tell you what was. I thought it, uh, I thought it was a winning I, formula. I, I, I thought it was I, really something. I, what the most inventive thing I did on that show was, is we found that in Russia they have everybody has a, ca a camera in their car, because so many people gets will like bump into you and crash into you on purpose, so they can then sue you in Russia and it's so common that people put cameras in their cars that run all the time. Mm. And so if you go online you can go on YouTube and they have these cam cam uh, camcorder pictures, these camera pictures and there's some amazing things with people crashing into things and then flying over stuff and all kinds of things. And so what I did is we had, of course, a chroma key in back of us. In fact, we had this big blue psych that was in back of us. And um, what I did is I took a, uh, like if I were to do it here, I would look at the, uh, at, the, at the green screen and turn around this way. And I gotta take off my earphones and pretend like I'm driving, right? And we would have these pictures in front of me. And it was terrific. I love that. I just thought that was the best thing we did on that whole show. It was insane. Just insane. And I think one of the shows that I have up there has that, that piece in it. So, you know, I should put more of those up because they were really good. Though. I agree with you. I love doing those shows. Yeah, and I, you know, in the whole dynamic too where Albert got a job at Fox... Yeah. And then Fox gave him an ultimatum, and he told him to go fuck themselves. Yeah, he, well, they, here was the yeah. ultimatum Fox gave. He was doing the Alan Combs show. He's producing it, and uh, uh, and paying him good money. I mean, this is why I've always absolutely loved Albert as as a friend and as a person who I work with. Uh, he uh, they came, they said we found out that you're. Uh, producing the Alex Bennett program on the uh, on the internet and he, he said yes and he says well you're gonna have to quit we can't have you doing that and doing working at Fox you know like I was a big competitor right mm -hmm. and he just told him well if I if I have a choice to make here I choose Alex and he left left a very good job at Fox he admitted to me on the side that he re really kind of hated working at Fox, <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, he said it wasn't a hard decision to make. So, well, he was great. He was so great at SiriusXM because he was a contrarian to a lot of what you were you would go on oh, to yeah. like oh, a yeah. tangent he was about. Perfect. He was perfect. And you know, then with Fox, you would. 
it's like you look at a guy like Bill Maher and he, the way he criticizes the left and he goes, well, the left feels like it got more radical and it left him stranded. Albert feels like the old school conservative and it was right before they started going real crazy. Well, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't conservative, though. Yeah, but he wasn't, but he was a contrarian to what a lot of the stuff that you would oh, yeah. go on oh, about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And he still is. We still do stuff with him on this show. And uh, he, you know, he, he will, he, he will take me to task, you know, so, and I, I love that about him, you know. Oh, we, I got, God, God love him. I, I'm glad he still comes on. I know one time I missed him when you had him. I don't know how often you yeah. have him on here, but yeah, I, I miss stuff all the time. I don't see stuff. Well, let's talk to these other people as well here. I'm sorry, Alex. Oh, that's okay. No, that's okay. I really thank you. I, I relish that picture, and I'm I'm glad that I still have it to show you. Uh, uh, did you see it? Ke you saw it, didn't you, Kevin? The picture? No, I didn't. Oh, here, for all came the people that just late. came on, it's a picture that uh, Brian, uh, a friend of Brian's, drew of, of me when I was at Sirius XM. Oh, jeez. And here I here's my moon rock right here. Your three D glasses. And my three D glasses, because I always used to talk about loving three D, right? Nice. And uh, that's the only way you can draw those aren't the three D glasses they use in movie theaters. Those are the old anaglyph glasses. But if you're gonna draw a pair of three D glasses, you can't drew do two lenses that are the same color, right? right. You know? So but that would just work perfectly. That was wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate nice. it. Nice. Mm. Really nice. And uh, so uh, how, how's everything with the rest of you guys? I, uh, yeah, I, I just... got rained out tonight. Oh, really? Yeah. What's the temperature tonight? It's 75 degrees. Really? Here it's <laughs> in the 60s tonight, which is nice. I'm looking sure forward. It beats 109. Huh? So it sure beats 109. I would say so. I would say so. But I'm still tired of the humidity. I'm just absolutely just sick and tired of the humidity. So, you know. And Ray, what have you been up to? Anything? Uh, oh, yeah. Let's see. Um, I've been on a diet. <laughs> um, Why do you need to lose weight? Because I'm like 25 pounds overweight. I mean, it's Me too, Ray. Yeah, because my back and my knees suffer. So I got to I got to do it. I mean, that's the main reason. I mean, don't I, don't, I don't I don't really look that overweight, but I am overweight. Really? Oh, yeah. And really? And, uh, OK. Yeah. It's just it's I have my I have arthritis all over. And when, it, when I'm too heavy, it just kill. It just makes it worse. Yeah. But from the waist up, you look fine. So that's all that matters. Yeah, my legs are huge. Yeah. And you no, have um, a, your shirt that says equity. Is that because you're striking? Oh no! I just we had a like a, we had like a picnic at uh, SF Shakes production of Cymbeline in the park the other day, and I was in charge of giving away the shirts to the union members. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep uh, our uh, Fran Drescher got reinstalled as president of our union. Isn't she sick? Doesn't she have some kind of? Uh, I heard she just. Oh, I just heard Rosie. No. Not Rosie. Uh, yeah, Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. On tick, this I never look at TikTok. I looked at it yesterday, and she was saying that she was supposed to go over to Fran Drescher's house. The Fran was ill, like oh, it's COVID, really bad. Really? Wow. That COVID? Yeah. Oh wow. Well, I hate Fran Drescher, but you know. I think it was Fran Drescher. Oh no, no! I got her mixed up with Kathy. Uh, yeah, Kathy Griffith guy. Kathy, Kathy Griffith. Kathy I always Griffith. get those two mixed up. They look alike. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She looks Fran really Drescher and, and, and no, well, Kathy Ka Griffith is a little younger, but not that much. I don't know. For in my mind, I, I associate them. I I don't know why. Really? I know yeah, I don't know why. I okay. Do. I guess they were around around the same time when I remember back then. Well, they're both jerks. So. Well, yeah, they're, they're both jerky and out over the top, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, uh, now, I, you know what bothers me about the strike 
and I don't know, am I wrong about this? Tell me if I'm wrong. We're, it's now time for two union members to talk about our strike. <laughs> Bore the shit out of everyone again. Uh, oh, sorry. Poop. Well, <clears throat> no, what bothers me, there are, two, there are a couple of things that bother me. One, that it's not a SAG strike. It's not a uh, after a strike. It's a SAG strike. Yeah. Okay. Right, that, which is weird. Yes. Yeah. And yet I'm supposed to be on strike because I'm with after and it's SAG after. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But I got to thinking about it, you know, and how many, what percentage of people in, in SAG are out really don't work, don't make more than, say, $25,000 a year? I think 80, over 80%. Over 80%. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So this is between a Between 75 oh, and 80. Yeah. So does this strike hurt the other 20% that work constantly? No. Uh, well, well, it, it's hurting them, and they're not making as much money as they could be. They're not making yeah. money now. But what about those people, the other 80%, who could like use me. the work to feed their families, who aren't working because there's a strike on to help, oh, the, right. other, to help yeah. the other 20%. You get what I'm yes. saying? Yes, and also there are other peop ancillary people to the union now you know all the all the the people who provide the food and the and the drivers they're not working they don't have any work either uh, yeah. so they're oh, hurting. there are a lot of people hurting yeah uh, all and, the and all the restaurants that surrounded these studios that had a lunch crowd you know and things like that and i mean just on and on and uh, if the if the uh, actors and the writers aren't working then the lighting people aren't working and the audio people aren't working and right so, I mean, a lot of people are out of work uh, who desperately need this income. And while I do believe they needed to strike for certain things, yeah, I don't think there's, I don't know what they're striking for. They make such a well, I know what they're striking for. So it's uh, base, mostly it's the fact that Netflix mostly and, and the other streaming services show these programs over and over again can can reboot them and all this and the actors and are making money hand over fist and the actors are getting nothing for it okay and the writers are getting nothing for it okay i agree with that to a point okay uh i i do think that there probably should be a residual system i didn't know there wasn't one there's none you know for and, and yeah there's none and they kept saying they were going to do it and they never have because no one's forced well them. for shows on the streaming services there should be residuals there's yeah residual. and there's zero the only place they really have residuals i mean they never had residuals in the movie business you know you do a movie they release the movie and that's the last money you're going to make off, off of it until it's played on television yes and then it's on you, television. Right? then you got another payment for it being on television but you know, uh, with commercials, you got a residual every time the commercial was run. You know, there was right. a whole system there. And that has never been in place for movies. Hmm. No, until it's on TV. Like yeah, so I see, then, I see them wanting a residual system for that, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, there should be some. I mean, they're making tons of but, money. I, mean, and, and I think the big whoop they're making over AI is ridiculous. Yeah, but that's not the main one. The main one is wanting the residuals on the... Uh, they just want some restrictions on the AI, but they want them... People want the money for their work. Well, that they should, and I think residual. But they... You know, the thing is, they never set the tone for this thing, you know? Well, it's Because they, they only wanted residuals. That, that when If a person made a movie, there were no residuals. If it was shown yeah. on television, you got to check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, with TV shows, our union did the right thing. Every time a TV show played, I, I, I get I get residuals to this yeah. day for a show I did 30 years ago. But only on network TV. No, uh, this was on HBO. On okay, one well, maybe stand. HBO is more fair. I know Netflix sucks. No, what it was is it came oh. under AFTRA, this particular show. Oh, AFTRA, right. When it came was under AFTRA, place. and what yeah. AFTRA said, okay, it runs one time, fine. Now if it runs a, another 13 weeks, uh, you get another check. Now, gr granted, I was getting checks for introducing Bill Maher for the last 30 years, and after a while, the checks amounted to $0.07 cents a show, you know. Yeah. But I mean, nevertheless, I got residuals for that. So, uh, but here's the: he, when's it going to break? 
Because you talk about Bill Maher, Bill, an article oh, came Bill out Maher, today. Bill Maher has he's decided done. he's going to go back and do his show. Mm-hmm. Can you yeah. blame him? He said, "Well, he says he's oh, not going to he's not going to use any writers. Um, in that case, that show might improve." Uh, yeah. Well, they, they, by the way, the Daily Show, when they did a writer strike back in Giggity Two, the last decade or so, I, I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Daily Show did a fantastic job without writers. It's like I didn't well, even notice. Well, you see, here's what they here's what they did at uh, Letterman. Okay, when they had that last writer's strike, I think it was a writer's strike, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he said, he went to the union, made his own deal. He said, yeah. what I will do is I will start paying them so much, okay, and then I will abide by whatever resolution there is eventually and pay all the back pay on that and everything. And so he got to go back on the air because he was willing to go along with anything the union came up with that was finally decided by the whole industry. I remember that, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, because he cared about his writers. He knew that was the essence of his show, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, Bill Maher is saying, well, I'm, I'm just going to go back without writers. But you can bet your life if Bill Maher finds that he can do a show without writers, once the writer's strike is over... You think he's going to bring back the writers? Nope. How is he going to do it without writers? Well, I mean, I do this. Without, just shorten the monologue. I do this without writers. Mm-hmm. Of I think he's. Na- I think course, he's just he- naturally snarky enough where he could do his own stand-up. Well, the guy's been the, in, the, in the business the, for a million years. Here's the problem. This is where he's going to get into trouble. Okay, he's a member of the Writers Guild because he's one of the writers on the show. And he's a member of the Writers Guild. So now if he goes on and he ad-libs jokes he thought up. Scab. That's scabbing. Because yeah, he's a he writer. He could get kicked out of the union. So going back is really, he's going to be a scab. You know. Uh, no one gives a shit. Well, I, if the union gives a shit. Yes, they do. You know. they give it okay, you think, you think his writers are going to go back to work with, with him? This, this is a protest. He's well, protesting. He's protesting the strike at this point. Well, who it's cares? The only reason to go yeah. back on the air. Who cares? No, I'm not saying you're wrong. The, but who cares if he doesn't like the strike? The fact is, the people he works with every day voted a strike. Okay, and he should honor no, no. that. And no, he the should person, honor no, that. the people, no, the people that work with him every day didn't vote a strike. They're following the strike as they probably should. Well, no, but they, there was a vote taken at the union. I just got a thing today from AFTRA, they're going to sue another group or, or go on strike against another group, and I get, get to vote whether they go on strike. I never strike. voted. And it was for the... Uh, <laughs> God, I'm spitting a lot lately. I don't know what that is. I uh, think AFTRA still run no, better. No, SAG's what, always what, behind what, the... Well, what's happened is uh, SAG, AFTRA, is suing the uh, game people, the video game people. Is going to go on strike against them. So uh, if I if I write a jingle for Alex, the, the new Gabnet thing, would I be a scab if I wrote a new jingle? And said it? No, you wouldn't be a scab no, here. This isn't a union show. This isn't a union <laughs> oh, show. Okay. Well, all right. I I don't know. I I, I think that people that probably work with Bill Martin, like I mean, listen, a lot of union guys get. Well, into the other the, the, uh, the other person who I think inspired uh, Bill Maher was uh, uh, Barrymore. What's her name? Uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Uh, she decided to take her show back on the air yep. no. uh, without writers, uh, but she's a performer. And the question is whether because after is all, well after isn't on strike against TV. You know, I mean, uh, if so, you wouldn't see Lester Holt every night, you know. Uh, there's no strike against TV, no strike against radio. Uh, if you do a filmed show, yes, that's that's actionable. But if you're doing a, uh, I don't know, I, well, I guess the soaps aren't doing, aren't, because they need the writers. Yeah. yeah. 
But everyone it, else is falling asleep here. I know. Well, anyway. But you know what? It, it does affect everybody watching right now. Yeah. Then I'll tell you how it's, it's affecting everybody watching is because if you're watching TV at night, there's nothing to watch right now. Yeah, where's Wednesday? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> oh, thank Fox. God it's not back. Fox, wait a minute, Fox is uh, running nothing but game shows and reality shows. And that's pretty much what you're going to see on all the networks. Yeah. Well, I'm so behind on all the shows. I, I got tons to watch, so I don't worry. Yeah, me too. Oh, I've got I, a lot of I, stuff I, to I, it's, there's less and less to watch, though. Yeah. You know, hey, I, I got stars lately. Mm -hmm. There are some damn good shows on there. Really? On I had it, and I got rid of it. Did you ever take a look at some of those shows you've never heard of? Yeah, well, the I watched. Is horrible. I, I watched them over what? the years. What? I'm watching this one right now called Minx. It's hilarious. It's really? about this woman who starts. Okay, a, you want to know what feminist. I think? For my money, is the best of the streaming services. Uh, ever since Discovery took over Max, forget it. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah I agree. It's 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 pathetic. Yep. Absolutely pathetic. It went way downhill, way fast. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you the one that's worth the money. It's only what six ninety nine a month. Is uh, Apple TV? I love it. They are producing. Uh, don't send me chats, okay? Because they screw up my screen here. Uh, they have Apple TV is fantastic. The Apple TV has some of the best programming. I told Marjorie, I said, it's the new HBO. Totally. They're doing the kind of really smart, good programming that HBO used to do. And, and they don't flood it with a bunch of crap. There's just a very few shows that are all really good. Yes. There's a show and, called- And there's this show I call, saw called Severance. It's incredible. Have you seen that? I, I liked it. Marjorie didn't, but I did. Oh my God, I thought it was amazing. Yeah. But this show, have you seen Invasion? Not yet. I started. I started watching it, but only like a half hour. What's ago. great about Invasion is it's a show about the Earth being invaded by aliens. But for the most part, you never see the aliens on the show. It's about the people and their lives and how they're impacted by this thing happening. And and it really is a very good show, very good show. And what was the other thing we were watching? We watched this thing with. Um, uh, about this guy who uh, he, he's on trial because he's crazy and I can't remember the name of the show now but it's very good I mean it, it, I, I found that everything I've watched on Apple TV is really quality and good yeah some, you, it's so like HBO was yeah foundation yeah but uh, none of it some of it might not hit the mark exactly but it's quality it's good it takes the kind of risks that HBO used to take yeah, and now since Discovery's taken over HBO, forget it. You know, they're gonna no, they're used... gonna have they're gonna have Guy Fieri starring in Game of Thrones. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's it's terrible. It's just terrible. It so. is. I, I I used to go on to HBO all the time, and now I find myself never going there. Well, there's just, the, the only thing good right now is Harley Quinn. I like. I don't know if you've seen Harley Quinn, yeah. uh, but it's funny. It's very funny. Um, I was watching the gemstones, the righteous gemstones. Yeah, but it's so I like this. I, I like it. It's just yeah. so incredibly ridiculous. I can only take so much. But yeah, yeah, I, I like the righteous gemstone. I, I do too. Uh, I like that guy. His his sense of humor. I forget his name. I thought this season was going to be is the last season. It turns out it's not. They renewed it, so it's coming back. But uh, you know, I mean, I. Uh, uh, it, it, Ever since Discovery took over, they've just screwed everything up, you know? Yeah, I agree. And they've yeah. been getting rid of all the uh, Warners. They've been getting rid of all their big, heavy hitters. Chuck Lorre, you know, does things like Big Bang Theory and Two and a Half Men. He's a very successful producer. They got rid of uh, uh, Greg Berlanti, who did all the DC programs. You know, that, that whole... Right. lineup they yeah. had over there at the, yeah, the CW DC for crazy. years. Yeah, the Arrowverse, they called it. Yeah. Uh, and he was a very productive producer for them. They got rid of him. Why? They I got rid of J.J. Abrams. 
So I, I don't understand that whole Max thing. I just don't get it. Well, because it's done. It's Discovery, and all they know how to do is, you know, Guy Fieri's uh, eating chili. You know, I've been in three Discovery show episodes. They're just garbage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're just, and they hire a lot. They mm -hmm. they farm out a lot of it. I mean, everybody does, but to like really low budget people. Uh, 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 Kevin, what's your favorite streaming service? I don't really have a favorite. I like Apple TV and some of the stuff on Amazon. And yeah, well, I, I'm really kind of pissed off at TV right now because of our dish. I came home from Oregon and our dish was, you know, they're they're in the typical contract disputes with ABC and NBC. Oh now. right, so that shut off. So, and, and I have actually have Good Morning America outside my door in the court right now, and they're going to do a live thing tomorrow. Oh, my so the God. The court's all fucked up, and they got, you know, all these trucks and shit out here. Because Who's of the out car there? Club. There's Good Morning America. Why are they there? There's a car club across the street, a girls' car club, lowriders, and they're going to do a special on them, I guess, tomorrow morning. <laughs> eight o'clock your time well don't worry as soon as it's over you'd be surprised how fast those dishes go away yeah it's like four o'clock in the morning here they're going to be here and they're going to be making all kinds oh, of fucking that's noise. wonderful they yeah. got the whole court clogged up they got security people out there they got cameras and shit out there and it's like are they going to pay are they going to pay you people for the noise they're going to make and everything no, else no no hell no they've been feeding them across the street but just go get in the line. Well, I'm you know what bothers, me, what bothers me is the, <laughs> the, these these uh, TV companies and movies and so on like to use our building for movies. I mean, we huh? were in uh, yeah. we were it's in great uh, uh, Mozart in the Jungle, yeah. major part of Mozart in the Jungle. We were in an Academy Award nominated movie last year. Anyway, they do that here, and every time they do it, what happens? They put out craft services. Do you think they say yeah. to the people who live here, hey, if you'd like some of our craft services, come on by and be our guest? No, you've impacted our lives. There are wires everywhere. You know, you're making noise. Uh, sometimes you're doing this way into the night. The least you could do is, you know, offer us a soda pop. Dinner you know, or something. Yeah, or just, just go get in line, pretend you're an extra. Yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. They did, they did a show here once called Pan Am. And I took a photograph of all the people down in the court, and there were the women dressed up as the stewardesses. And you know who one of them was? Margot Robbie. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So that was what she was doing back in the day to earn a living. Uh, well, if you watch Good Morning America tomorrow morning, you might see the, my house in the background. Oh, okay. You should wave. Or, or me flipping somebody off yeah, okay. out of the yeah, window. Yeah. <laughs> moon Shut them. Up. Moon them. Go. Get off my lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they invade, <laughs> a, they invade a, uh, a neighborhood, and then they don't invite you to craft services. I think that's yeah, just right, so right. wrong. You could do a plug for this show, Kevin. Yeah, Just I thought about that big gabnet put banner. Put a big sign that says... Put a, put a gabnet thing in your garage door. Right. <laughs> oh, boy. No, it was... Uh, Gabnets. 8 p.m. They were here about a week ago, too, doing a bunch of filming, pre-filming pre shit. Yeah. So. pre -filming. Low riders. Yeah. Well, anyway, so they yeah, do... girl low riders. So they're doing a live shot from here. Yeah. Yeah, from there, not from here. From there, yeah, from here. It, yeah. You'll see it live out there, but we'll we'll see it on tape. Well, live I'll tape. make sure that I watch Good Morning America you so betcha, I can yeah. see that. I can't because I, I'm under contract and I can't see it. What, do you, mean, what do you mean you're under contract? Well, no, out of contract. Because the Hearst, that's what I was saying. Oh, your TV? I, I got Dish, and my ABC and NBC are not on my Dish. Get one of those little uh, plastic antennas like I have, and you can get channel no i'll just watch oh. it on uh, you, you know how nutty i'm America. getting dot com or here's how nutty yeah. i'm getting i got a uh, thing from verizon i have one gig up and one gig down on my bandwidth which is a lot of bandwidth that wow. people know right damn they're offering <laughs> me for 30 dollars more a month two gigabytes up and two gig uh, gigabytes Whoa. down 
And I told Marjorie, I think I'm just going to get it. I can always, you know, drop it and go back to the one gigabyte if I want to. Uh, but I want to get it because I just want to see how much faster it makes everything go. <laughs> We're so far it out will. of town, we got one pigeon up and one pigeon out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like having a T1 almost. I don't know what the what those had ran. I like can't remember. I, a, I can't remember what a T1. I think was slower. Isn't T1 ancient now? I don't know, but all I remember is when I had it at the company I worked at, it was amazing. It was just like, yeah, well, oh, that was a long time ago. It was amazing yeah. to me when I was able but to get... But that's wired, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. When I was able to get 8 Direct. megabytes up and eight mega, mega, 80 megabytes down, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I remember Ooh. when I first... It, uh, by the way, Bubs now has... <laughs> High Does he have a camera? He high doesn't have a camera. I sent him a camera today. High oh, speed, good. high speed internet. Wow. And uh, I told him when I first got high speed internet, I couldn't get with the concept that I was always on to the internet. You know, up until that time, I had to do what he did, which was put that little thing on that goes. <laughs> Is that what you still use it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! I, didn't I know always thought computer. that was the coolest sound, though. Yeah, but after you know, after a while, though, it slowly drives you crazy. Yeah, it does. You know, I didn't know you could. Still you always do felt that. like, "Ooh, I'm getting on the internet." He said Here there are eight, there are eighty homes in uh, eight, fifty thousand homes, rather, in San Francisco that still have dial up. Oh my God! Yeah. Jeez. but they finally That's got amazing. to his apartment house after all these years, and I told him you're just going to be amazed because it's always on. You just go, it's always there, you yeah. know? Oh, God, Unless, I hated doing oh, that. And, and then I found out he was using, I think, Verizon or somebody like that, so it's not always there. But uh, but it's uh, always supposed to be still use floppy there. disks? Yeah. Do you still use floppy disks? I don't think so, no. I think, I think he has <laughs> I got a, a bunch you can have. <laughs> well, I was telling these people earlier that Dana Carvey gave him a laptop, a, a Mac laptop, about a year ago. So he uh -huh. could do shows oh, with, right, with yeah. Dana, and then Dana started doing shows with, uh, uh, what's his name, the other guy from Saturday Night Live. David Spade. David Spade. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Spade. And so uh, he's never had him use it. And I said, you've got a Mac that's only about two years old? He says, yeah. I said, <laughs> it's got a camera. And I'm sending you a camera. I said, I want you to have it so it'll be on your machine. But I think we should warm up that uh, laptop because I think that's yeah. uh, that's the thing we got to use with you. I'll go show him how to use it. I don't care. Well, it would I be nice you know, if I, uh, he was on. We could see him when well, you're. Well, I told. I, I was thinking of telling him if one of you would volunteer from the I'll Bay Area to go and over and him. see him. He would that you would go over and set it up, put Zoom on his machine and all of that. I'm a Mac dude. I'll, I'll show Where him is how he? to use it. I'll I'll t I'll mention that to him. He's I'll go. Marina. If you want to go, Marina's I'll go with too. you, Kevin. It's really close to me. Yeah, it's up. It's over there in San Francisco in Cow Hollow. Yeah, I can get yeah. there in uh, thirty minutes. Uh, about two blocks, three, four blocks away from where I used to live. You know, yeah, uh, I know where it's at. On the other side of <sighs> Chestnut Street. If they'll have me, I don't want to bring any hookers. Yeah, right, right. No, I'll mention it to him. That if we really want to set it up, I'll send yeah. somebody over there, Mention and it. I'll give you, I, I'll give you his number, and you can call him, and you can say Alex said uh, I'm I'm the guy who you were he talked to you about, yeah. and I'll help you set it up. You know, yeah, won't be hard at all. Yeah, and, piece of cake, huh? Piece of piece cake. of cake. Yeah, mm. it'd be like butter. Yeah, yeah but mm. I said to him, now that you have it, I said, are you going to get any of the streaming services like Netflix or Hulu or Apple Plus? He says, no. <laughs> oh, shit. No. He needs a decade update, man. He's like mm -hmm. stuck in 1990. Well, I think he likes it. I think he likes the reputation. Some people yeah. do that, yeah. You know? Uh, and I think he just likes it because everybody talks about it. He still has a flip phone. Yeah. Okay. I have a friend who just got rid of, he's just the same, he just got rid of his flip phone, and not because he wanted to, it's because the company he had this thing wouldn't support it anymore. Well, no, so that's exactly what happened to his old flip phone. And so they offered him a brand new smartphone, right, yeah. as a replacement. You can tell him, he didn't I've got want a, it. 
He wanted. A I've flip got a, a an still works? updated flip phone that he can use that he can have. <laughs> I've got a flip phone that AT and T gave me that will work on the new system. Yeah, well, I know he has one. They gave him. Oh, okay. Uh, I can't okay. remember what company it was. Maybe an AT and T. Yeah, AT and T. And they gave, gave him. My mom. But they, he had a hard time finding a flip phone. Yeah. All they wanted to give him was a smartphone. Yeah, they gave well, one to my mom. In some ways, he's better off. Back. I said, "You turn that down." <laughs> he said, "Yeah, it's probably too complicated for me." I said, "You're not stupid." He says, "I'm stupider than you think." <laughs> so I went, okay, you're stupider than You know what, Alex, think. this reminds me. One time I saw him at Rooster Teeth Feathers, God, about 10 or 15 years ago, and he, wa- and he was doing some new material, and he walked on stage with his flip phone. Mm. Uh-huh. And, the, and the text was in the flip phone. Yeah, yeah. Where you mm. had to, like, if you wanted to get to a C, you got, had to hit the A three yeah, times. And he was, and yeah, and he, ha- he had it on there in case he had to refer to the his, you know, what he, his material, he had it on a flip phone there on the chair. Yeah, well, I... <laughs> wait, till he, wait till he finds out how fast porn downloads. Right. Oh, you know, he doesn't know about the porn yet. I'm going to have to talk tell about hookers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do that last. If you guys download it for him, show him the porn before you leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give him, give him a on the porn lesson. Run. <clears throat> well, you know, I could get the two terabyte, uh, two gigabyte uh, system. Okay. Okay. Tw- uh, Two k, yeah, two gigabyte is it? Yeah, two gigabyte system, and then he can download it from my machine. But of course, his machine will probably choke up trying to take all that fast download. Yeah. you know. But anyway, so just give him uh, slow porn. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and for the last what five, eight years, I don't know. Whenever I had bubbles on, I've always had that animation going, and it's mm-hmm. just the audio. I know. And to be able to see him, and I said, finally, people will be able to see you. He says, well, I don't know if I feel good about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Bubs, you go on stage every night where people see you. Well, You're, see, that, that's the whole hey, thing with this, that old stuff. He's got all that material. Wait a second, Alex, you had this show many years ago before serious everything and on the internet in between jobs and he was there on camera all the time do you remember that i used to watch you're it. right he, he was on the yeah he was on the, he was like, there like two uh, or three uh, times uh, a week on the podcast essentially yes. that we did that was tv yes that podcast from my uh, from my uh, uh, old bedroom yep yeah yeah you probably didn't know it and we could and we, and you had uh, aol messenger we could uh, talk to you on uh, no, I think we were using another system. What was it called? Uh, it, oh, I can't remember, but it was a messaging system. Yeah. See, see me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but it was. A, yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. I have to remind him of that whenever he. Yeah. He's just, he's just playing me. You know, he probably, he's probably at home now soldering things together because he's got the high band. <laughs> you know, probably know. He's probably been shining me off for years about this, so, you know. <laughs> there you go, Bennett. But, yeah, there he you just go. doesn't want to have to get out of his pajamas. Yep. Well, that I don't know. I don't know if he sits around in his pajamas. I'm going to have no, to ask No, I don't know. I'm, just I'm going to ask him if he doesn't go out that much, what is he, what is he doing? Oh, he has a car that's about 30 years old or something. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. This no, guy uh, loves living in the past. You know, uh, mine is ninety. Well, I'm playing the theme song, which means that time is slowly up here that we can't hear anymore. Hey, Brian with a Y, nice having you here. Thank you, I appreciate it, and thanks for the uh, picture years ago that I have kept. I love you. Yeah, love you too. Uh, thank you, Brian. I really appreciate it. That with an I. Okay. Uh, thank you to Charlie Wallace with an IE. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, with a V. With a V. Uh, <laughs> thank you to <laughs> thank you to Ray. Ray, nice having you here. And Jeff, you just came on a few minutes ago, but nice to see you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And no problems with Jeff two two nights in a row. It looks like two nights in a row. Yeah, he's getting very it's good. Getting boring. Night, but I heard the yeah, it's getting boring. You techie dude, you. <laughs> Boy. Anyway, 
I don't know what's happening. I'm spitting a lot. Wait, I, <laughs> I guess I'm just getting old. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. And we got our lights back on and everything else. Uh, you know what? you got to stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next here with a little program called, yes, you know what it's called. It's called the, uh, what is it called? Oh, it's called The Intersection. And it's with Jack Bishop. We're most of the same gap net. We'll see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, do us a favor. Tell her I love her. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.